So, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Rafael. I'm a security researcher from Brazil. I would like to thank you, uh, of the, thank the organizers of this event to having me. I'm so grateful to it <coughs> and every one of you guys for taking time to come and enjoy my presentation. Uh, as you know, I'm here to talk about uh, how an APM environment can help us to improve security. So let me introduce myself first. Uh, I'm a Brazilian information security professional. I have almost 20 years of experience. I'm not as young as I look. And by the way, I'm getting older today. Today's my birthday. And uh, it's a, uh, uh, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's a, uh, I'm really glad about to be here with you guys celebrating it. Uh, my research in all of those years were about auditing, penetration tests, and incident response. <coughs> I'm a huge fan of OASP. I used to contribute, like uh, translating and uh, presenting uh, talks, but uh, every uh, every talk I did it on Brazil. It's my first time uh, presenting in English, so I, I'm a little bit nervous, but I I think it's gonna. I hope it's gonna be alright. So hope you enjoy the ride. So first of all, a little bit of context about the research. Uh, <coughs> we know that besides the the all controls uh, implemented, it's critical to keep uh, a closer look into application behavior. So we're gonna talk about how you can analyze behavior of the application and take some security insights from them. <laughs> and uh, the, 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 the main goal is to fix problem before they, they cause significant damage. So uh, I think there's an important point, it's observability. Observability is the key to, to accelerate detection and response of security issues. It's the, the main goal of the, uh, of the presentation. Uh, and we also know that it's important to security teams to interact with other teams, like uh, uh, development, business, architecture, and so on. And we're gonna talk about that, how, how to use the same tool. For example, the, the APM is for performance monitoring, is a kind of tool for developing guys, but how can you use it, how can enjoy forces using it for security purposes. Uh, and we also know that uh, it's important to, to that uh, security department's budget is uh, often a competing priority with the other area for business. So if you can share a tool, you can share the budget and make it more affordable for the company as a whole. Uh, this research, in this research, I used uh, six APM tools and apply it in real scenarios. Uh, I spent many times in center of operation of security and monitoring. But however, no names and no brands will be disclosed, okay? <coughs> uh, if you need more details about research, feel free to contact me after this presentation. I'll let my contact information with you guys. Uh, just checking how many people in the audience use an APM tool. Raise your hands, please. Okay, uh, <coughs> how many use the NPN2 for security purpose? Or just to performance, just for developing stuff? Okay, great. So, uh, <coughs> just an a, a overview about uh, APM, it stands for, uh, as you know, Application Performance Monitoring. Uh, it's the practice of monitoring the performance of applications, collecting data such as response time, error rates, resource usage, all this data can be used to identify and troubleshoot uh, problems, performance problems as well, uh, as well to optimize uh, application performance. But uh, why, why it's uh, important? Why is APM important? Uh, it's part to improve customer satisfaction because uh, when the, the applications are performing well, users are more likely to be satisfied with the experience 
and it can lead to increased customer loyalty, engagement, and revenue. So it's a pretty cool stuff for business to make an APM <coughs> in place so as it can improve the customer satisfaction. Uh, it's important to reduce uh, costs. It helps you to identify an optimized uh, resource and performance problems that is decreasing the revenue or decreasing the, the ex user experience and uh, the, the cloud cost and many of costs you have in your infrastructure. Uh, and finally, it's important to improve security. With the right data, data sources, it's very helpful to identify injections attempts, security misconfiguration, vulnerable and outdated uh, components, authentication failures, and data, uh, data exfiltration, and many other security risks. Uh, it's a powerful mechanism to reduce the mean time to detect and the mean time to repair uh, <coughs> technical issues in your application as well as uh, security issues. And how does it work? Uh, typically work by collecting data from a variety of sources such as application logs, uh, like incoming requests, outgoing response, errors, and etc. Uh, uh, application logs and uh, metrics, it's uh, quantifiable measures like response time, throughput, memory usage, it's kind of stuff, and traces. Traces is a sequence of events that show how a request is processed by application. Uh, this particular one is very interesting in the security point of view. The, the research focuses on identifying security insights that can be obtained from APM tools to identify the most critical security risks to application as seen in the OWASP top 10 project. So for each critical risk, we're going to check some insights that's possible to obtain from an uh, APM tool. You know? uh, starting with the... the Sorry, starting with the broken access control, uh, an APM2 can detect uh, session hija hijacking attacks by monitoring the sessions that are active on, our, on your application. If it detects a session uh, that's being used for an unusual location or device, this may indicate a session hijacking attack. <coughs> there is some uh, piece of information that is important to take a look. Uh, suspect modification of session information. The, there is, remember about the tracing stuff, the sequence of events. If the sequence uh, change, you have to, to it's important to have uh, a model. So this is my expected behavior of my, my business transactions. And if it's uh, unusual behavior, you have to fire uh, 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 an alert to this kind of starts your response uh, process. Uh, <clears throat> so if not, the attacker is trying to, to bypass uh, access control checks, uh, ac control checks uh, by uh, tempering and modifying parameters, you can detect it by checking the, data, the database behavior. Uh, for example, uh, and when this starts <coughs> to try to, to manipulate the parameters in a request from the database, uh, it's natural to, to increase the number of SQL uh, errors, requests, and consequently, uh, uh, errors. It's a behavior that you have to <coughs> take a look at because it's always a sign of uh, not, not only a, a broken access control, but an injection flaw in, in general. Uh, not, not expected uh, operations. In an APM2, it's uh, common to take a look in every operations that the dat database is running. And once again, you have to, ha to have a, a model of what the operation is expected. And uh, if the server starts an unexpected operation, it's kind of trigger for a, a, an alert and to response process. And uh, the increase of response time is semi-subtle, subtle, 
uh, behavior, but it can be assigned that the, the request that were sent to, to the database is manipulated. Okay. Uh, about cryptographic uh, failures, uh, this attack is all about exposing uh, sensitive data and uh, uh, such as uh, credit card numbers, social security numbers, um, to an unauthorized uh, users. It can be detected by monitoring for sensitive da data in application logs and, and uh, the network traffic. Uh, it's important, the, the main point here, it's important to, to determine the, the protection needs of data in transit and at rest. Uh, an application, for example, an application can uh, use uh, an automatic database encryption, okay, so it's encrypted uh, at rest, but if <coughs> the database it has, uh, is the responsible for the, the encryption, when you take it from a request or from an injection, uh, it's the, the guy who is going to retrieve the sensitive data without uh, encryption. So it's important to, to build this model about security needs of each type of data. And uh, it's, it's important to verify all the response about uh, contain the response uh, sent to the users about if it contains some sensitive data. You can do this looking for particular formats. For example, credit card numbers has a, a, a specific format, uh, social security numbers and many other uh, informations like this. So you can look for this particular format or for expression. If there is a, a, a sensitive information specific for your business, you can make an expression to, to find them, a field name or something uh, like that. It's interesting that most of the APM tools we are testing has a sensitive data detection product. It's a, a, a common uh, feature nowadays. Uh, that's exactly because this kind of trouble. Uh, but the main point here is about to map the protection needs as each type of data you have. <coughs> Injection. Uh, if there is a, a sudden increase in the number of S SQL errors, uh, this may indicate an injection attack because it's a typical behavior of parameters tempering attacks. Uh, APM2 can be used to, to list all the specific carries running the server. If the command is not expected, this may indicate an injection attack. You can trace the execution command of the individual commands uh, to identify the specific request that is causing the problem. So <coughs> that's the main point about uh, Tracy. It's important to, to security because we talk about behavior. Uh, it's possible to, it can be used to list, uh, to list the queries and you have to compare it with the queries that you expect it to be running. And monitoring the response are being, uh, th that are being sent to users. If you detect response that contain malicious code, this may indicate an access attack. Uh, about insecurity, uh, insecurity design, uh, sometimes all the controls, all the security uh, implementations are in place, but there are some insecure business process. It's, about, it's more about the logic of your uh, uh, application. And for example, an e-commerce application where you can block some items, put in the cart or put in the, 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 the bag and for a period without uh, effectively pay for them. So the attacker can abuse Use it and block all items on your portfolio. It's not, there is no security control for that, technically speaking, but it's a, a model business that you have to, to prevent. So it's very important. So it's very important to, to know uh, what's expected behavior 
of your transaction, the, the business transaction, the, all the process uh, that your application is responsible for and detects any anomaly in volume. It's uh, easy to, to see in the metrics analyzing and the parameters and attributes and you can, as you can see in the logs analysis and the tracing analysis. <coughs> About security misconfiguration, uh, it can be very useful to identify service. It's an interesting point because it's another uh, not so common utility utility for all from the APM tools. You can use the tracing and the, the logs and the, the network traffic analysis to <coughs> detect services that you don't know that's in production. Prediction. Uh, if you analyze all the unexpected requests or error message, <coughs> you can find someone accessing objects that you don't even know that is published. Uh, for example, a uh, uh, sample page that you use, um, admin page that's, that's in place, you don't know how about, and uh, when you analyze all the requests and the error message, you can <coughs> identify them. Most of times, unnecessary service are not protected. Uh, same thing here about service that you don't know that's in production. The, if, if you are not protected, it's uh, important to identify them because they, they must be vulnerable. And after, uh, so you can use it to map all your application service that you don't know that is published, but it's also to compare all the objects that you find uh, <coughs> With, uh, with, uh, to correlate with a CVE, to a vulnerability database. So as you can check if you are running uh, some insecure software. Uh, let's see that you, there is another uh, ways to detect if it's vulnerable. For example, a scan, a testing, but we're talking about how can use APM tools to do this. So it is joy force with the, the development guy, the production guy. Uh, identification and authentication failures. It's all about uh, volume and uh, content of the, the, the requests. It's uh, uh, most of time that uh, there is a, a sudden spike in traffic can be a sign of an attack. And if just volume in uh, authentication uh, system, authentication page, it's most of the time it's going to be a, a brute force uh, attack. And <coughs> the parameters you can use, th there is a, some Intel information that we use. It's to monitoring uh, data leaks uh, from the uh, basis of passwords and usernames. And uh, since the, 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 this, user, this, this username was leaked, we put it in a blacklist. So if you ever, anyone is trying to use the username, it is tagged like a, a malicious content because it's what the bad guys doing. They give, take all these lists and use it in a brute force attack. Uh, another point in uh, uh, authentication failure is it's about to abuse, uh, to explore some vulnerability in the recovery password process. So uh, it's about metrics again, and if you detect a spike in the volume of the requests to requ recovery or forgot the, the password process, it's gonna be someone trying to, to abuse it. Uh, <coughs> software in data integrity failures is the, the, the number eight. It's important to allow only expected and scheduled updated uh, activities. And uh, it's always check sources and contents of these updates. We detect it from network traffic originated in the production environment. If your production environment is requesting 
from some uh, suspected repositories or with some suspect uh, expressions in the contents of the, 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 the request, it <coughs> must be a malicious uh, update. So you keep uh, an eye on it. Uh, security logging and monitoring failures. Uh, all the insights here were taken from metrics, traces, and logs obtained from the application. So if you, for some reason, the application stopped to regist register those information, we are totally blind. So that's the, the importance of security logging monitoring failure. And besides that, it's important to check if the application sends sensitive information for logs. It's nowadays with uh, the, the mainly uh, of the, the, the privacy laws, it's important to check if your application is not writing uh, sensitive information in application logs of, uh, and if it is uh, in, a, in a request, in parameters, there's sensitive information that's going to be logging in the, 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 the request log. <coughs> So it could be a privacy uh, infraction. And the, the server-side uh, request forgery, uh, if the application is fetch a remote resource, it's important to validate if the request is not tampering by user. It's a pretty similar to the malicious updates. We, you are looking for the behavior of the, the production environment and if there is some some unusual uh, internal activity internal traffic like a, a port scan like some requests <coughs> that's not uh, uh, expected it's, it's it's important to check if one of these requests is using user supplied information for make this request that's the uh, the ssrf uh, totally about. And <coughs> to conclusion, I know that uh, conclusions are typically used to summarize uh, uh, a topic, but the goal of this conclusion is to expand the topic even further. Uh, it's important for security and development teams to work together uh, with same goals, same culture, and sometimes same tools. That's the, 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 the message here. Uh, why are while this presentation focuses on security insights from APMs, APM tools, uh, security insights can be found uh, anywhere. That's the, the importance about same culture. I think that when you have this, this conflict about developing uh, uh, goals and security goals, it's harder to, to, to make it real uh, secure. So when it, when you work together, I think it's it's better. And information security is a, a, a shared uh, responsibility. We all have a role to play in creating a more secure world. Okay, guys. So uh, keep in touch. I keep my uh, as I saw as I said, and the the start, uh, I'm looking for some uh, international opportunities. Uh, it's my first time in English, so it's, it's a, a pleasure to make a great network with you guys. Uh, feel free to contact me at my mail, by mail, and can find me on LinkedIn if you want, okay? Uh, I also like to, to discuss anything further if you want some details about the, 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 the research, about the products that I use, about the evidence that we have, I can show you no problem. Uh, just contact me and we can talk about it. Okay. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, the questions, if you have some.
how can I say that the, this increase is suspect or not? Is that that's the point? How do the benchmark I use? How are you, are you, how are you anticipating there's an increase in a particular application or a particular area? Yep, th there's, there's lots about uh, sometimes some attacks we put a, a, a forced benchmark. Uh, if it, this happened, this volume, this expression, this uh, the you have to alert. But sometimes it's about uh, machine learning to to learn it how the the, the natural uh, uh, behavior of the application. And if you escape from this model, it's trigger an alert. For example, uh, most of the, the, the scenarios that we use, it's about uh, e-commerce. And e-commerce, you don't have a, a fixed behavior all time. Uh, depends on the, the time of the day, depends on the, the some, some uh, promotional stuff like Black Friday and this kind of stuff. And we have to learn how the application <coughs> uh, behave uh, between these periods. So I don't know if I answer your question. That, that, that helps a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Is all of the tools in your study, are they all capable of all of the detection? No, the no, no, no. Uh, there is, uh, I try, and uh, uh, I think I can try, I can save some names and just don't put in the slides because it's, but for example, the, the Synos, it's an open source APM. It's pretty cool to, to, to uh, detect, to visualize things, but there is no, the, the, the automatic part to analyze, to detect and, and accelerate the process, they don't have. Uh, the Datadog, it's a, a, a great tool. Uh, it, it's not, not open source, not free. But there is some models about security, about uh, vulnerability management, about sens uh, sensitive data exposure. Uh, and for example, the, the sensitive data exposure, Dynatrace has, New Halic has, uh, Datadog has. So the, the, the main difference between them is the commercial stuff. There is more automatic stuff, more, more models to help you analyzing. And the open source guys, it's more uh, useful for visualizing, and you have to automate the the, the response with your own. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes, I think uh, you primarily talked about detection, uh, but there is another use case I have in mind, and I'm, I don't have much experience with APM, but I'm interested to know whether it's feasible or not, which is review. So I think you mentioned that we can see like the stack traces. So let's say we have an application with multiple routes, and let's say you want to find which routes are actually calling the database, or which routes are calling another internal API, so maybe focus on these ones and review them, because they are maybe the more dangerous ones, or even like kind of know have a list of dangerous things to do, uh, like dangerous functions in the stack trace that shouldn't be called or need to review and so on. Is, is that a feasible use case, can I use an APM to know, or to select which routes for example, are more risky than the others? Yeah, totally. Because uh, uh, the, the, I think an uh, uh, interesting point the, uh, about the, the motivation of this uh, research, as I said, I, I used to, to work with uh, uh, a security analyst in a, a center of operation of security. And sometimes the, 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 <coughs> the company doesn't have a security tool, like a CN and kind of stuff. And sometimes uh, the, the more interesting point is sometimes we have a, a security scope, we test it, we check it, and when they go in, on, on production, the, the, the attack is in another place that I said, oh, I don't know, where is it? No, nobody told me. And <coughs> when, when we keep an eye on the, the performance monitoring behavior that happened, it's easier to find it in place and it's easier to find some blind spots. So uh, I don't know if the, the, there is a, a, a about your, your, your question, but uh, the, the, the same way you can 
you use it to find these blind spots. It's find it to to it use it to find the natural or the behavior. So, for example, how can I say that the most uh, uh, this period is most probably to happen uh, an attack in this application? It's from monitoring performance, even the 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 past, the history about that. I answered the question. Or? Thank you. So this is a very relevant topic to me. Because in the past, I have worked at the binary base. Okay. And now I'm working at a cybersecurity company that dynamic application testing. I wonder, in your talk, do you see any opportunity for a company to use a combination of APM tool and task tool to get more value I hope so, but the, I didn't see yet. But I think uh, uh, there is a, a polemic thought I have that the, the security area is uh, it's tending to dissolve it in other areas. When you have an isolated area, it's, it's dangerous. And it's kind of uh, some security tools is going to be implemented, also security concepts, is going to be implemented in other type of tools. For example, it's, it's already in progress. Uh, the APM tools, uh, uh, for example, I told you here uh, about Datadog, there is, uh, it's an APM tool, it's a performing stuff, but uh, there is some vulnerability management uh, modeling, there is sensitive dat data exposure modeling, so I think the the other two the, the the security concept is gonna be spread in other tools, uh, but I don't know when and how. <laughs> it's okay. I will answer. Thank you very much. So that's it. Thank you guys. Thank you very much.